What's up tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I hope you like this video. This is your review for Bel Air season one episode four. So um, we start this episode off, we see Carlton playing chess with his dad, and you can tell this is something that they do on a regular basis, this is their, like, I guess their tradition kind of thing, um, and Carlton is actually pretty good, he, you know, beats his dad, and, um, you know, his father's like, oh, I guess I better stop taking it easy on you, and Carlton is like, yeah, right, um, we find out, you know, he checks in on him, hey, how you feeling? He said, feeling better than I did last week, so we know that this is probably about a week later, from where we left off at the last episode where, you know, Will, you know, in his basketball game. Um, we found out that the next day, there's going to be a couple of campaign events, one of which involves Carlton and Will going out and canvassing door to door. And Carlton, of course, is not that excited about, you know, going out and canvassing. But he says, well, you know, Dad... If me and Will are able to go out and get, you know, 30 signatures without any drama, no problems, you know, can I get VIP tickets to Monaco at the Grand Prix? And he said, I'll tell you what, you give me 50 signatures and it's a deal. I think that's a pretty low ball number for VIP tickets to the Grand Prix in Monaco. But listen, I ain't mad about it. Do what you do. So, um, and of course he agrees to it. And he, he told him, he said, you should have counted with 30, but... I mean, you should have counted with 40, but, you know, all good. So then we see, um, the next day we see Will, um, at school talking to Lisa. And, you know, they're kind of, you know, bonding and vibing on, um, they have an art class together. And, you know, he finds out that, um, and that's when he finds out that her mom died of lupus. And she said, you know, I normally don't talk to people about my mom, but, you know, I consider you a friend. You know, and he said, well, I appreciate that. You know, thanks for sharing. But what we also see is there's this guy with some tattoos. We never see his face watching Will. Now, we know at the end of last episode, Rashad found out where Will was. And so, I mean, the impression that you get is that that's somebody that's looking for Will. And we see Will pull off and we see him pull off following Will. And I was like, oh, boy. Um, after that, we see... Um, Will actually talking to Trey and Will finds out from um, Trey that yeah Rashad does know where he is and Will was like did you tell him and Rashad was like of course I didn't tell him but you know Will was like when is this going to end he said I don't know but he ain't going to be happy until both of us are in the ground and he's actually got some people in LA looking for you now so Will goes to Jeffrey well, he's looking for Uncle Phil, but he finds Jeffrey. And he tells Jeffrey what's going on. And Jeffrey was like, okay, we got it. Don't worry about it. He said, and there's really no need for you to bother your aunt and uncle about it either. And Jeffrey was cool with it. Like, he sat back down and started drinking his coffee and reading the paper again. And Will was like, maybe you ain't hear what I just said, but, I mean, you say you got it under control. Okay. <laughs> we see Ashley getting her hair braided. Her mom, you know, Aunt Anvil was braiding her hair. Ashley is preoccupied on her phone, texting somebody on the phone. And Aunt Viv is like, who are you talking to? Who are you texting? You know, when my mother used to do my hair, you know, I used to, um, I would pay, pay attention, you know. And we would talk about all kinds of things. And Ashley was like, well, why can't I just leave my hair in a ponytail anyway? Like, we're going to the skating rink tomorrow. Like, it's not the DNC. And her mother said, listen, there are going to be a lot of donors there. There are going to be a lot of eyes on us. And we have absolutely... We've got to, you know, be on our P's and Q's at all times. So then we see, later on, we see Aunt Viv cleaning out her art studio. She's ready to get back to her art. We see her talking to her um, sorority sister that is an art buyer from last, um, from last episode. And she's talking to her about, you know, ready to get back into it. She said, you know, um, and then she did say that she's sort of, she never really voluntarily gave up art, but she sort of kind of, you know, she said that, you know, Phil had been supporting her in her career and it was time for her to support him and then with the kids and, and everything. So she's definitely ready to get back, but she's nervous about whether the art world has passed her by, whether her talent is still there, whether she'd be able to sell any art. And what we, the impression you get from all of these different conversations is that she absolutely was in the art, you know, like she was selling art, she was having galleries, having shows, and 
was actually making some money off of it at one point in time. So she wasn't like a starving artist and you know, it sounded like she was actually doing the damn thing. Um, then we see Hillary trying to get into these influencer houses, which I had never heard of this before. Like I know all about influencers. I've heard of influencers before, but I had never heard of influencer houses where a bunch of social media influencers live together in a house. But we see her going on these different interviews and nobody seems to really be interested in what she's doing. I mean, her social media following is not impressive to them. What she's doing on social media doesn't seem to be that impressive to them. And she's frustrated because she's she ends up talking to Will and she tells Will, she's like, listen, I can't afford rent in LA. Like, and I remember I said that in the last review that I hope they make it realistic that yes, this Hillary is a lot more down to earth than the other Hillary, but absolutely there's some challenges because she is a pamper princess, right? So then Will starts talking to her about, you know, being homesick and how, you know, he really wished that he could bring, you know, his friend out and, you know, and Hillary was like, listen, you better start using what you got to get what you want because Carlton has leveraged this whole canvassing situation um, into a trip to the Grand Prix. Like, he ain't being nice to you out of the kindness of his heart. Like, he's getting something out of it. And so she said, you better work, you know, you better work it and get something from, you know, get something from mom. And so... He's able to basically make a deal with her saying, listen, if me and, I'm sorry, my neighbors are clearly watching the All-Star game and they are bouncing off the walls. Um, she said, you know, um, he, he makes a deal with Aunt Viv saying, listen, if me and Carlton can go out and canvas and we can get the signatures, can we, um, you know, you think I could bring, you know, um, Trey out to visit? And she was like, well, I guess, you know, so she's going to fly him out um, if he's able to, um, you know, if they're able to get along, right? So the family has their meeting to get their assignments for the day of canvassing for the event. We know that Carlton and Will are going door to door. They're registering people to vote. We know that, um, I mean, Hillary and... Ashley are going to go to the different businesses and try to get them to, you know, put the signs in the windows and that kind of thing. And Phil and Aunt, Aunt Viv are going to be actually talking to some donate, some donors, you know, and that's going to be how the, how the day goes, right? Um, and then, then Uncle, you know, Phil says, can, you know, can I talk to you, Aunt Vi? And she was like, oh, Lord, what I do now? Well, come to find out, polling data has come back and basically said that they they think that Aunt Vi is a strong woman that speaks her mind and has her husband's back, but she has a tendency to say a little too much, maybe go a little too far, maybe be a little too forceful. Um, and so he talks to her about it. He said, listen, you know, I love you down, okay? But the polling data says X, Y, and Z, and I got to listen, so can you please maybe try to you know, tone it down a little bit. She was like, I mean, maybe I just shouldn't come at all. He was like, no, I need you there. Like, I need you. But can you please kind of keep it in check a little bit? And let me say, I love the way they're writing them. Like, I wasn't too sure. I thought maybe they was going to write him as this hard-ass, you know, cold-hearted husband. But you definitely see that they are a couple and that they have you know, they have that love there. Like, there's no disrespect there, you know. So, I can appreciate that. Um, so, we see Will and Carlton out canvassing. And, of course, Carlton is trying to lead the way. And he's not doing a good job. I mean, he's conservative. And he's in this, you know, black neighborhood. And he's trying to talk to the people, you know. And they are not listening to him. And they are like, why should we, you know, ain't nobody need to register to vote. And he's trying to tell them, you need to register. This is what you need to do. And you need to vote. Like, who else are you going to vote for? And Will was like, yeah, you are never going to get, you're not going to get no bees with that, with that vinegar. Like, you, you never going to get what you need out of that. Um, and Carlton was like, well, if you think you can do a better job, then you do it. And so... Will does, he starts canvassing and he actually gets people to sign up. And Carlton is like, you're basically like, you're getting these people to sign up by 
talking about the other, you know, talking about the opponent and, you know, making this a, you know, a Black Lives Matter, blue, blue lives, you know, defund the police type situation. And that's not what my father's campaign is. And Will was like, listen, do we want to sign people up to vote or are you worried about how I'm doing it? Because I'm getting the, the job done. So the two of them end up getting into one of their arguments and Carlton basically calls Will out and he's like, listen, you sitting here, you know, he was like, I'm sick of you bending the rules and always winning. He was like, why are you here? You know, they said you came out here for a better opportunity, for a better education, but why are you really here? And of course, Will don't have nothing to say and, you know, um, and he's like, absolutely, exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. So Will ends up, you know, basically telling him, you know, fuck you. And he rolls out. Now, while this is going on, Hillary and Ashley are canvassing the businesses and they actually end up rolling into a record store where they find Jazz. And Hillary was like, oh, Jazz, what are you doing here? And he was like, well, this is actually my store. And she was like, what? And I love the way they're writing Jazz's character. Like, they're writing him so multi-dimensional. Like, he's not that one-trick pony from the... And again, I know it's a sitcom, so he can't be but so deep. But we find out that that it's his uncle's record shop that he sort of left to him and that he's keeping it going. Um, and, you know, Hillary was like, okay, well, what's your Instagram? And he was like, I don't, I don't have no Instagram. She was like, you, you joking, right? He was like, no, I'm serious. I'm not. He, she was like, are you serious? Like, for real, what's your Instagram? And he was like, I, I don't have one. She was like, give me your phone. And so we see Hillary set him up on Instagram and does like a whole video for him. Um, to get him started and she shouts him out on her page because again, she's got hundred, you know, she's got 50 60,000, you know um, Subscribers and so to get him started, right? So then um, While this is going on Ashley was like I'm gonna go next door to the next business and Hillary was like sure go ahead And they get to talking and they kind of flirting a little bit and again We know on this show Hillary couldn't stand jazz, but it looks like the two of them are kind of getting along a little bit, right? And so, um, um, Ashley, as soon as she's away from Hillary, she texts her little friends talking about something, I'm on my way. And we see her, you know, like basically ditch Ashley. And I'm sure she done took some kind of Uber, honey. And she going over some, some kids houses where they're playing video games and watching a movie. And I was like, okay. Now, when she gets there, she asks about one of the little girls that's not there. And I was like, okay, because it is a couple of guys there, so maybe she's feeling some kind of way, right? Um, and we see later on, they eating popcorn, watching a movie, and one little boy try to make his move and put his arm around her. And who come rolling up on her? Jeffrey. Talking about some, Ashley, it's time for you to go home. And, of course, Ashley is shocked to see him. But that lets me know that Jeffrey got things well under control. He must have low jack on her find your phone app, sharing your location, whatever. But he found her, okay? And he said, Ashley, he was like, you know, Hillary is worried, was worried about you. Like, you can't be ditching your sister like that and have everybody worried. And of course, it doesn't seem like they told the parents. So they must know that Jeffrey is the first line of defense before we get mom and dad, um, you know, going crazy over this. Now, while all of this is going on, Hillary had already left the record shop and Will rolls into the record shop. And of course, he's pissed off. And while he's there, some celebrity comes through, some celebrity producer, I don't know him, because uh, I'm old. Some celebrity producer then came through. Um, and of course, Will is impressed. Jazz could care less because Jazz is like, oh, he ain't here like at least once a week trying to get some albums out of me, you know. And they take a picture for the gram. And Will is like, since when do you care about social media? And he was like, since Hillary came through and, you know, hooked me up. Um, and so he was like, okay. Um, um, but he realized, you know, so, but he also realizes that he, you know, he talks to, to Jazz about what happened with, you know, with Carlton and Jazz, he also realizes that he needs to go back. So he ends up going back. He apologizes to Carlton and they end up canvassing together to get the rest of their daggone, um, signatures done. Actually, Will goes back. I don't know if Carlton... Will went back and got the rest of the signatures because he knew that his goal was to get Trey there. So, whatever. So, while this is going on, Aunt Viv and Uncle Phil, they're meeting with their donors, and it's going okay, but one of the women recognized um, Aunt Viv 
Um, she used to work at a school where Aunt Viv had painted a mural. So she said, yeah, it's a shame the school closed and your mural's gone too. And Uncle Phil made a comment like, yeah, she used to do art. And she was like, why did you say that? Like after they left, she was like, why did you say that? Why did you say I used to do art? And he was like, because you, you, you did? Like you used to do art. Like I don't know what I said wrong. And she was like, well, why are you making it seem like, you know, like I used to do art. Like I'm an artist. So then she starts getting on him about, you know, him needing to take a stand um, when it comes to some of these issues. And he was like, like, like issues about like, you know, crime and stuff like that. And he was like, well, I can't afford to really take the, you know, take a stand because I don't want to piss off the police union and I don't want to piss off this person, that person. And she was like, listen, either you're going to have to make a decision and take a stand and you're going to piss somebody off or you're going to lose this election and piss nobody off. Like the reason why the voters aren't really warming up to you is because they don't know where you stand on the issues because you won't take a stand. She was like, you need to put your foot down. And I know that it ain't an easy thing to do. And I know you don't want to piss anybody off, but you gotta, you're going to have to put your foot down and make a, a, make a decision, make a hard decision. Um, and he listens again. You can tell that he's listening to her and he respects her opinion. Um, So we get to the skating party. Um, Carlton and Will both got what they wanted. So both of them are going to get their little, you know, get their reward, which um, Trey's going to fly out. So I guess that's going to be the next episode. Trey comes to Bel Air. Um, and um, Carlton got what he needed. We see Jeffrey on the phone with, with the same guy that we saw following Will, so that wasn't a guy looking for Will, that was a guy protecting Will that they had hired. And come to find out, Rashad, they know that Rashad had actually found Will, and they had offered him money to pretty much let the whole situation go. And originally, he had accepted their offer until he realized that they had a lot of money, and so he decided to up the deal and renegotiate. So the guy was like, well, how much does he want? And Jeffrey was like, it don't matter what he want. We ain't paying it. I said, oh, Rashad, you might have overplayed your hand, buddy. So we're at the skating party and everybody is there. Lisa is there. And of course, Will is happy to see her. But we see Aunt Vi um, happy to see Lisa as well. And she said, listen, I know things got really awkward when you and Carlton broke up. But girl, I miss you. You know, I, we need to get together because, you know, I met with the sorority and we're doing some great things for our lupus fundraiser this year because her mother died of lupus and she said yeah you know mom definitely loves her sisters and um she said listen me and you need to do a girls night with hillary and ashley like we used to do i really miss you so you see that she had a relationship with lisa that also was affected because of the whole carlton situation but she said absolutely you know she definitely wants to do it and you know you could tell that she was happy to see you know and vi and have the conversation with Aunt vi um Ashley is sort of pouting because, you know, she's not happy that she didn't get a chance to finish hanging out with her friends. So we see Jeffrey rolling up on her and saying, listen, it's, you know, we know it's hard. It's hard being the baby, but that you're growing up and people may not be, you know, recognizing that you're growing up. He said, so, you know, I took the liberty of inviting your friends um, to come to the party. And so Jeffrey had gone back and invited her friends that she was hanging out with to the party. Um, cause come to find out these are not friends from her school. These are friends that she met online gaming. And he told her, he said, listen, that's dangerous. Like in this case it worked out and it wasn't, you know, like a 50 year old man behind the screen, but it's dangerous for you to just hook up with people you met online. So then we see Will in the bathroom, um, and a cop actually comes out and come to find out that the cop is Lisa's dad and he's the chief of police. And... You know, he's talking to Will and, you know, of course, Will remembers meeting him. But of course, when he met him, he had on a suit. He didn't have on his police uniform. And <clears throat> Will is still dealing with a little bit of PTSD from the whole incident. Um, and, the, you know, the father, he's sort of, you know, he's talking to Will. Like, you, I don't know what the deal is between him and Phil, Uncle Phil, but this clearly is something. And you can tell that he's trying to figure out Will's situation and why Will is really in L.A. So after they have their little encounter, Will tells Lisa, he was like, listen, you didn't tell me your dad was a cop. She was like, why does it matter? Like, what's the big deal? And he was like, well, you know, 
basically, I don't want to be around you if your dad is a cop, which is really weird. But, and of course, Lisa's hurt by it. Um, but Will, again, Will is dealing with his own PTSD about this whole situation. So, we get to the end of the event, and Uncle Phil is making his, you know, he's making his speech. And he opens up to the floor for Q&A because, oh, that's the other part about this. I'm sorry, let me put a pin in that. This was supposed to be a private donor-only event. But Will, in his canvassing, one of the ways he was getting people to sign up to vote was by inviting them to come to the event. And Uncle Phil was like, listen, this is a private event. Like, people paid a lot of money to be at this event and to be able to ask me questions in a controlled environment. Like, I don't know these people. I don't know what they're going to ask me. I can't control the narrative. And Will was like, but that's part of, like, you you need to get to know the people. Like, they want to come. They want to talk to you. They want to meet you. So he opened up the floor. So they were able to convince him to do it. So they opened up the floor. And people are asking questions. And, of course, the questions come around to what he's going to do about crime. And what type, you know, the gang initiatives and things like that. And, of course, Lisa's dad is standing there front and center. And this is where he listened to his wife and he followed his wife's advice and he took a stand and he said listen you know if elected DA I'm going to actually you know we need to do some retraining we need to do some you know um, some changing up the way we do things and yes some defunding of the police is going to have to happen well of course that made the crowd happy but that didn't make Lisa's dad happy and Aunt Viv was sitting there looking at him like you did what had to be done like you did what needed to be done. Now, we don't know what the end of result of that's going to be, but it's definitely not going, you know, it's, it's definitely going to cause some problems for um, Uncle Phil and his um, campaign. So everybody goes back home and they're happy with the day they had. They feel like they had a very successful campaign event. Um, Will goes upstairs to call Trey to let Trey know that, um, well, actually, he'd already let Trey know that he was going to be able to come. Well, did he tell him no? Anyway, he let Trey know that he was getting ready, that he was coming to um, Bel Air for a visit. And of course, Trey was excited to hear it. But he also said, Oh, you didn't hear the news. And he was like, What news? He said, Oh, Rashad is dead. He got shot down to the strip club the other night. And of course, Will is like, Like, Trey expected him to be happier about the news. But of course, in the back of his mind, Will is remembering that conversation he had with Jeffrey. And probably how nonchalant Jeffrey was about handling the situation. Anyway, that's episode four. I am all in. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Talk to y'all later. Peace.